What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome to episode 19 of my Eastside Hockey Manager Early Access Let's Play here with the Maple Leaves and today I've got for you guys a slightly different episode and the reason it's slightly different, it's not that different at all really, but is because I've actually played a substantial amount of games going into today's game. Today we're going to be live comming the game against the Blackhawks. The reason I decided to do this game is because we have got a few of their former players of course, a few of our trades earlier in the year involved them as we brought in Yarmusen and also Shaw. Uh, into our ranks from their team, so they're going to be playing against their former franchise today. In terms of where things are from last episode, because as I mentioned at the end of last episode, we were going to be going further into the future, as you guys will see, I've actually played a ridiculously large amount of games. We've played 25 games, and in that time, things have gone pretty well. I'll show you the team form here. As you can see, we're not in amazing form, but in our last 10 games, we've won 7, lost 3 as well. None have gone to overtime recently. You can see the Blackhawks are also one of the teams really in form at the moment. So they're not going to make things easy for us. But anyway, uh, rather than go through all the results in detail, because as I mentioned, there's been 25 of them. We'll cover a few of the bigger ones. Of course, last episode was against Boston, where we won 4-0, or 4 nothing. Anyway, uh, one of the big results was actually against the Habs. We took them on immediately after that Boston game. And as you can see here, we won 3-1. Really good performance. Gauthier and Kessel grabbing the big goals for us that really made a difference. Um... And yeah, it, it was just a great performance, of course, against our rivals. You can see the other results here. We took on the Lightning twice, who, of course, won the um, uh, won the uh, Stanley Cup uh, last last season. Yeah, last season. So it wasn't going to be easy playing them twice. Uh, in the end, both games went to overtime. The first one we won in a shootout. Yarmusen, or Yarmusen, the former Blackhawks man, getting the goal for us. And then in the other game, well, they won 4-3. So <laughs> it was really tight, These both of these games, really. You can see here we actually lost uh, in the shootout this time. Kadri, Fowler, and uh, Kessel all missing for us. Palat and uh, Kucherin, or Kucherov. Um taking the shots for the Magic see Kucherov, got his goal, that was the difference maker. Anyway, moving forward through this, you can see we did lose against the Red Wings, but we did manage to get a win against the Senators in overtime. Moving into the month of January, a somewhat less packed schedule compared to some of the games we've had. Um, you can see here, a lot of wins, a few losses as well. The big win really was that one against Boston, you can see the overtime 2-1 win. But we also got wins against the likes of the Wild... Um, and the Hurricanes. You can also see here that we did lose a few games this time against the Dallas Stars. Is it Dallas Stars? I don't want to be, get the teams wrong. I'm pretty sure it's the Dallas Stars. It is the Dallas Stars. I'm never saying Dallas Stars again. Uh, we lost to the Ducks as well, and we did lose to the Lightning, who, as I mentioned, we had two close games against them previously. This game, they just blew us out the water in the second. They were 4-1 up in that, and it was really difficult. We tried to chase in the third, but we left ourselves exposed at the back. Anyway, just a few games this month so far. We did beat the Capitals as well as the Sharks, but we did lose to the Winnipeg Jets and also the Preds. More recently, we beat the Sabres and lost to the Blues. All in all, we've continued in pretty decent form. There's been a few more defeats than perhaps I'd like, but we've continued to grind out a decent amount of wins. Looking at the league table here, you can see we do have a little bit of a cushion onto the teams behind us. We also have played substantially less games than a lot of the other teams in kind of and around as you can see here the teams like the lightning who have obviously been going really well they've played 62 games and they are still three points behind us we of course have four games in hand on them you can see looking at our power play percentage it's not actually been that great for us 15 percent there um, but fortunately for us our penalty kill percentage really is right up there in the in the league in fact it is the best percentage in the league and that's really what's helped us a lot this year defensively we've looked fairly strong you can see here Boston with as good a defense as ours you can see they've played the same amount of games they've actually conceded one less goal however we've scored substantially more than them and kind of I guess a combination of a really solid defense along with some decent scoring I've seen us going well so far this year Anyway, looking at the player stats, Kessel and JVR really leading the way here. Kessel currently on 87 points from 52 games. I'm not sure how many points he got last year. In fact, last year he got 147. So he's got a little way to go to surpass that, and it's going to be a challenge. But um, he's continued to perform really well, as has uh, Van Riemsdyk. You can see, looking at further back, Bozak has tailed off quite a bit. He's been struggling a little bit, and this has kind of been a common issue in my team, is a lot of players are getting tired. Now, originally, I thought this was perhaps down to the training schedules, but it can't be, because these are players all on different training schedules. I wondered, perhaps, if one of my schedules just had too many kind of categories set on intensive 
uh, which was kind of impacting, I guess, the players. Because if I show you the schedules here, you can see I've got all these custom schedules. And I wondered if perhaps it was just a little bit too vigorous. But as you can see here, all the players being affected by these issues and by this tiredness play different positions. So I'm not sure if that's something in the latest update that's kind of been done. Or if I've just kind of got a little bit unlucky. But we have got a few players in need of a rest. So I am trying to rotate the squad a lot. You can see here Kessel currently out injured for us. He's out for two weeks. Really he should be on the injury reserves. Let's put him on there. Uh, you can see also David Booth currently on injury reserve. He's actually out for a month. He's already been out for one month. Unfortunate for this guy, because whilst he isn't a key player for us, you can see that so far this year he had played 46 games for us. And considering where we'd been struggling, which was beyond kind of our first line attack, he was one of the few players really putting in the performances. And whilst 23 points in 46 isn't incredible, he certainly contributed to our team. And so he's going to be sorely missed whilst he's been out injured. Anyway, I have been doing a few trades, uh, just to kind of refresh your memories perhaps, and I am I can't remember for certain what trades had and hadn't been done. I don't think I've covered this one, which was the trade of Gre Nathan Horton, who of course is quite injury prone and uh, kind of on a very large contract. He's now gone to the Ducks, along with Garrett Sparks, who's ended up at, I think, the Ducks AHL team. Uh, Cozen's right, we gave away, 25 years old, the wrong side, and also Hartikainen, uh, who again, a good player, but he's 25, he's not going to improve a lot, and in return for those four players and the rights to two of them, obviously, we did get the Ducks first round pick. Now, since then, the Ducks really have kind of improved, and I actually feel like I have covered this before, but the reason I want to bring it up is because um, we have the picks of our own pick, as well as the Ducks pick. And I can't remember who's the other pick we have. I think it's the Stars. And if it is, they're in 8th at the moment. So maybe they can drop off a little bit more. I don't know if there's an easy way that I can check the draft picks. This is one little thing I'd love to see changed. Is the fact that until the end of the year, you can't see the draft. Even if it was just a preliminary draft order or something. Or just a way you can see whose picks you've got. I think the way I'm going to do this is if I approach to trade, I can show you guys here. So yeah, it is Dallas's first round pick. So they've dropped off. So that's some good news for us. Because I have a feeling in last episode I mentioned I was a little bit disappointed with the Ducks pick. And Dallas were going fairly strong. But you can see they've dropped off. However, I say that. It's worth noting the massive, massive, massive kind of ga gaping kind of gap, I guess, between the teams outside the playoffs and in the playoffs in uh, the uh, Eastern, Co oh sorry, the Western Conference. It's kind of surprising how bigger a kind of deficit has been created there. You can see, even as it, there is a gap there, but it's by no means as quite kind of vast, and it's still attainable, perhaps for a few teams. But anyway, that's kind of what's been going on at the team. Uh, just a quick look at the team statistics. You can see if we sort by points scored. You can see Nazem Kadri's really been kind of stepping up of late. He's got uh, 17 assists and 20 goals in uh, 58 games. So that is a total of 37 points. Cam Fowler's done really well for us. And as I mentioned right at the start, Hjalmarsson and Shaw also right up here. Both players who came from the Black Corks who were playing today. Uh, you can see Hjalmarsson's really done a great job. He slow, started off slow, this guy, but 24 assists or 25 assists recently has helped a lot. And Andrew Shaw, who's kind of been playing in our second line a lot, has really stepped things up too. He's going to be playing perhaps slightly higher up in the line uh, just because of Kessel's injury. But you can see so far this year, 19 assists and 8 goals is quite a good return for off 58 games. It's not incredible, but considering his performance last year for the Blackhawks, where he got 6 goals and 4 assists, it's certainly an improvement on that. And I'm hoping that we can continue to see him develop a little bit little bit because really Andrew Shaw still only 24 plenty of time still to improve so that's what's going on there um, in terms of how we've been kind of set up tactically you can see here that um, if I just ask my coach to set up the lines um, this is how we're, we're kind of setting up so actually why why are you picking Kessel Kessel Kessel's injured we can't we can't have Kessel in the team my coach wants Kessel <laughs> What more can I say? Right, we're going to have to change that real quick. Bear with me, boys. Um, uh, Shaw can play right wing, can't he? This is what this is why I don't live com. I can't multitask. It's one of the hardest things about multi about live comming stuff is the multitasking element of it. I kind of feel like, um, in general, I've almost mastered the art of it in Football Manager. But when it comes to doing a task like this, a task which, whilst I'm certainly a lot more kind of what's the word, familiar with it than perhaps I was, I'm still learning. 
Uh, right, we're going to go with that, that line setup, I think. So we have got a few injuries, as I mentioned. I'm going to confirm that now. But yeah, I've kind of lost my trail of thought because I can't multitask. Um, I think we're just going to get into the game. I'm going to be honest. If there's stuff that I've missed, um, let me know in the comments. If there's stuff that you want to see that you haven't seen, I'm very conscious of the fact that there's probably little nitty gritty details that you guys would love to see. Let me know if there is anything obvious. I think I've covered everything. I'm sat here kind of reaming off a list in my mind of things that I need to do before every live com. I think, I think I've done them. I think I've done them. Obviously, with the 25-game gap, I couldn't go into too much detail with the games that we've played. Otherwise, well, the first kind of half an hour of the video would just be me going, oh, when we beat this team and then we lost to this team. In fact, sometimes I'm a little bit conscious that that's what the episodes become kind of earlier than that. And for some reason, my game is stuttering a lot. What, what What's this? What's with the freezing game? Right, let's smooth out here. Hopefully. Um... So right, we are a man down here. Blackhawks on the um, power play. They're going to be looking to do something here. And they will do something there. Hossa blasts it home. I feel like Hossa's a fairly old winger. Someone can let me know if that's correct. Because the reason I feel like I know that is because I tried to trade for him. But I might be completely wrong. But anyway, we're on the attack here. And we do score. Grant score in there. Nylander with the assist. Fowler with the second assist. Good play there. Good to see Nylander getting in on the action, of course. We promoted him from our AHL team. We had a few injuries. And, of course, with injuries like Kessels, it means that he is going to be kind of featuring in our line. And, well, I'll tell you, another guy's featuring in our line. Panic. Scores there. Makes it 2-1. And that's a very good start to the first. And it uh, looks like we're going to go in 2-1 up. And we've got one power play of the Blackhawks to kill which we will do and now it's all even strength and now we're on the attack go on my son get the rebound JVR scores Van Riemsdyk with the goal Bozak and Shaw doing well so Shaw and Harmerson the former Blackhawks men of course starting in our first lines today going to be big for them we're having a good performance though so far especially considering the Blackhawks as I kind of mentioned before a team in some form we both have the exact same record of seven wins and three defeats in the league in our last ten. There's kind of perhaps a little bit of pressure on us to beat them because it's not going to be an easy game. But we've scored again there. 4-1. We are making this look easy. Don't want to get too complacent yet because anything can happen. And we have shown degrees of complacency. I feel like our team's a bit weird because sometimes we go ahead as the Leafs. We, we, we'll, oh, how has that gone in? Answers on a postcard. Um, but yeah, in some games we absolutely run away with the game and we, we just destroy a team. And then other games we fight back from behind in the third and we'll make an incredible comeback. And then there's kind of the third game where we kind of go really far ahead in the second and just decide that we're just going to throw it all away. So I'm hoping we're not going to have one of those games today. At the moment we're playing quite well. We've got some crazy stick action going on in the corner. But we are still on the attack and well, Johnson scored for us. Yarmerson with the assist. It's 5-2. We are scoring for fun right now. No need to change anything tactically. We're just going to let the action pan out here. But we have absolutely destroyed the Blackhawks today. Minute left on the clock. Maybe a late goal for one of the teams. Maybe a late goal. Maybe a late goal. It is a late goal. Bozak scores. Shaw with the assist. Good to see both uh, the men who we drew attention to. Harmerson and Shaw performing big on the big stage. And that is a 6-2 win. What a win that is. Just a quick look at the box score here so you can see... Grant, Panic, JVR, Parlat, Johnson and Bozak with the goals for us. But Yarmerson getting two assists and Shaw getting an assist at two is very pleasing. Just a quick look at the stats because we didn't check them during the game because it was just kind of going in our favour. You can see both teams had a decent amount of shots. In fact, we had about the same amount of shots. I think they may have even slightly edged it. But ultimately we made the most of the opportunities that came our way. We did win slightly more face offs. And uh, at the end of the day, we were just a little bit more clinical, perhaps, with the chances that we took. If we look at where they shot, they were shooting a lot from the blue line. Whereas if we view our own, you can see we we're having a lot more action in and around the uh, kind of blue paint. You know, right in the middle, we found a lot of space in the center of the ice. And a lot of our goals came from getting kind of the puck right up in the face of the goalie. And just not giving him much of a, a chance to, I guess, do a lot. You can see uh, some very nice finishes. Although that green dot is almost certainly hitting the wrong side of the post. Not that I'm going to complain one little bit. But anyway, uh, that's going to wrap things up for me, guys, for this video. As you can see here, Shaw reaching the milestone. 
of his 300th career NHL game. Kadri playing his 300th uh, career game too, so that's good for him because he's a player who just needs time on the ice to continue to improve, and he's doing well for us so far this year. So hopefully that can continue, particularly with Kessel out for a few weeks. In terms of when I'm going to be back for the next episode, I actually want to leave that up to you. So let me know in the comments if you've watched to this point. Would you like to see me go further ahead again, you know, nearer the end of the season, or would you prefer a few shorter kind of... Uh, kind of gaps between episodes, you know, 10 games at a time. The reason I did the big gap was just because there wasn't too much going on. I wanted to progress the save on a little bit, and it also gave me the opportunity to mindlessly click away whilst watching some movies and kind of playing the game, because what often happens is I'll get into the game, and 10 games is just enough for me to sit down for an hour and a bit, kind of really get into it, and then suddenly I have to stop to record. So sometimes it's good to just let myself go crazy and play for a longer session. Let me know what you'd rather see. As I mentioned earlier on, if there's stuff that I've missed, please, please, please let me know. If you've watched to this sort of kind of point, I guess, and just coped with my rambling, smash the like button. I don't know how you've done it. I'd smash your like button if you had one to show my appreciation. Uh, but yeah, that, that sounds like I've just tried to chat you up, doesn't it? <laughs> I'm just, I'm just going to end here. Thank you for watching. I will see you for episode 20. It is me, Jack, and I'll talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.